Oh, hello. Good morning. Tony, <laughs> hi. How are you? Hey, Amy, how are you? Pretty darn good. Well, great. It's a pleasure to uh, to finally chat with you. Uh, it's it's uh, we met a long, long time ago at Sundance, and uh, that's what I thought. Um, and you're here a lot, aren't you, in Salt Lake City? I live there with all <laughs> of my children. Really? I, you? I thought you were living in LA now. No, no, no. I flew the coop, and now I live in Salt Lake. And I'll, you know, I've been there for about uh, four four years. Well, it's a beautiful place to be, and great place to raise children. Uh, it is. It's lovely. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what comes around because this is a creepy, wonderful thriller. Thank you very much. I so appreciate that. Uh, how did the project fall in your lap? Well, I kind of put it in my lap. I mean, I read the play. It's Scott Oregon is a wonderful playwright, and uh, he sent it to me during COVID. And I said it was a great play. And I also thought it would be a great film to shoot, especially during COVID, because it's sort of a contained thriller, you know. And so we embarked on doing the adaptation. And, you know, Scott went out and, and started to expand the script. And we introduced the character of the camera. And uh, off we went. We we basically decided we're going to make a movie by this date for however much we had, and that's what we did. <laughs> I, I I think that doing a thriller like this is a very hard process because not only do you have to know where to place your camera, but there's timing involved in in how long a scene should last to build yeah. that tension. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I mean, you know, one of my greatest endeavors is to be this the dumbest person in the room, which I think I succeeded. Um, I had beautiful talent to help me craft the timing and the energy of the film. You know, I had a wonderful director of photography. I had actors who were very precise. You know, my my creative producer, Eden Warfeld, you know, my editor. These are all really necessary things in making sure that it happens at a clip because I did not want to give the audience time to be judgmental. And so it that as a true north of the story helped us figure out, well, what's enough time, what's too much time. And also yeah. my musician, Craig, Craig Wedren, who's my composer, you know, that's obviously a really huge part of how to craft a film. So are you involved heavily in the editing process as well? I mean, I imagine you are as a director, but do you actually put your hands on the the old avid machine and, and cut that would be a very very bad idea i'm sure that no good would come of that you know i actually the first time i edited, edited anything i cut and sliced uh you know super eight so i'm a bit of a luddite myself and uh, i had emily madavian who is there you know she teaches at university of utah and um, she was so incredible and she was fearless and she would sneak things out of the film that I thought I would never dare to lose. And, you know, I, I just, um, you know, relied on her uh, talent and, you know, but I am heavily involved. I mean, sometimes it's a matter of frames and, you know, within a take, what part of the take is the one that you really love. So if you really want to get the best out of what you created, you really have to be present for all of those moments. But uh, Grace Van Dien and, and uh, Summer Phoenix, both are incredible actors. They are incredible actors and they're incredible human beings, which I think makes them better actors. You know, they are incredibly generous. They're thoughtful. They're inquisitive. They're fearless. Um, I think Summer and I have some shared lived experience and determination to sort of get back in the saddle after some time away from the screen. Um, and Grace Van Dien has a true north to represent young women with dignity and sophistication of thought. And so I thought, well, who who better to have in the ring with me than these incredibly refined performers? And all of you come from impressive acting families and, and film families. So there. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's funny. I, um, I think that when you get to see people who love what they do, it's a bit infectious. Tell me in our last moments, what do you think audiences are going to take away from watching this thriller? Well, my hope is that you have conversations with the people you love about what they're doing, you know, and sometimes we need to question what the downstream effect is of our behavior, of our not telling the truth. There's, you know, conversations around generational trauma and why somebody, why does somebody behave the way they do? Maybe you follow the genesis of that behavior and understand that they're not just demon, that, you know, that maybe they were not served as individuals. So my hope is to be a little more inquisitive and a less less binary about how we think of uh, other human beings. Thank you so much. I, uh, I, I'm i going to grab you someday for a cup of coffee somewhere. Thank and you. 
Will you come to our, please come to our, our screening on, uh, I think the 22nd in, at the Broadway. We're going to have I a would love party. to. I so would will love you to please come? Up. Okay, that would be great. I'm sure one of the people at IFC will tell me all the information and all that. IFC is such a great company, by the way. We're so lucky to have them. I mean, our our world would would be really a much uh, less interesting world with all uh, all of their films. So. Thank you, Amy, for your time today, and I'll catch Thank up with you. you then on the 22nd. Wonderful. Bye. Bye.